girls and guys, uh, Roman Konarchev here with you today and today I bring you a tutorial on a uh, move that is commonly encountered in Russian and Ukrainian traditional folk dance called Kachalochka. Uh, Kachalochka comes from a Russian word uh, which means swing. Swings. So you know these uh, swings that you swing on? This is uh, what a Kachalochka resembles and uh, derives its name from. So let's get to it and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's go! Uh, in my opinion, Kachalochka is one of the easiest moves to learn uh, from Ukrainian or Russian traditional dance. So if you are starting out with something, this is definitely the move to start out with. It's pretty easy, it does not require too much uh, mobility or flexibility and neither does it require too much strength. Just some basic leg strength developed through uh, squats, lunges and pistol squats, things that I always try to promote on this channel. Um, besides that, the Ukrainian and Russian variations are not very different from each other, just the hand positioning is different. So, let's continue. So, first prerequisite is to be able to get into the deep squat position, like so. And chair, hop, hop. Oh, you should be able to do this very easily. This is an important prerequisite because a deep squat position uh, confirms that you have good ankle mobility and flexibility. And if you have poor mobility and flexibility, you'll just be falling backwards. So for this move, it's very important because you're going to be maintaining this position right here. If you don't have mobility here, you fall backwards. So this is very important. Number one. Okay, let's start learning the move. So the easiest thing to do is to figure out the stance in which you're going to be starting out your kachalochka from. For me, my right leg is in front. So some people start out with the left leg in front, I do with the right leg. The reason why I start out with this leg is because I enter move I enter the move to this position here and I drop right into it. So I would recommend to place your stronger leg in front, your more dominant leg in front of your other leg. And the weaker one is going to be right behind me. This is the position. The next step after you have figured out which leg is in front is to try a muscle kachalaj. So no momentum, not much swinging, but just to try to get familiar with the leg positions. So, the leg positions are to try to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that. If you can do this very comfortably, then a regular kachalochka would be pretty easy for you. This can also be used as an exercise, as a strengthening exercise for the development of a kachalochka. In my opinion, the next step is very simple. Don't think about too much theory and just pick a very soft surface, like I have over here. So here I have a nice carpet. You can also use a uh, mat, a soft mat, right? And you can also try grass. Grass would be very soft. So find a nice soft surface and just try the prisyatka. Try to keep your legs, your ankles close to each other. So the ankle is close to the other ankle. And when you're trans transitioning, they keep very close contact to each other and just try it so let's see what this may look like it may look something like this from the beginning so that's totally fine that's totally normal um, you don't have to worry about your uh, hand position just try the prisyatka see if you can do it or not if you can do it if you can get the motion down then you just need to refine the technique some instructors also mention that when you transfer the weight from your dominant foot, which is fully in contact with the ground, when you transfer over to your 
other foot, the other one is on the toe and not on the full foot. I personally do not think about that because I believe that when you have good ankle mobility, you're going to be, you may be, you may be slightly off the ground, but it's not something that I have ever thought about when performing the kachalochka. But it's just something to keep in mind as well. So an important thing to understand in kachalochka is that it is ultimately a jump. When you're transferring your body weight from one leg to another, what you're doing is you're not just shifting your body weight uh, laterally, you are going in a uh, parabola-like motion. And the way that you accomplish this is by jumping from one leg to another. So you're making a small hop from one leg to another. This is a very important concept to understand in Kachalochka. If you don't do that, your Kachalochka will look too mechanical, it will look like a muscle kachalochka, and you don't want that, especially when you go very fast. So an extremely common mistake is just to transfer your body weight laterally from one leg to the other. And uh, this is a big mistake because you have no hop or no jump from one leg to another involved in this variation. This is what it looks like and this you don't want to do. So let's see what it looks like. So a person who would do a kachalchka this way does the following. They think about their knees just going like so, just touching the ground without any jump. It, it happens like this. I have no jump here. Let me slow this down. So this is what a person does. They just they just shift their knees from side to side. This is very common in beginners and this is a big mistake as I already mentioned. After you have understood the concept of making these little hops or these micro jumps from one leg to another and you have understood how to do this in a slow fashion, uh, then you can increase the speed. And as you increase the speed of the motion, you start relying less and less on actually thinking about the jump you don't think about it, it happens automatically. But one interesting thing that does happen is that you start relying more on the swing of the arms and, and your body working in a, um, working in a um, symbiotic uh, fashion. And as this happens, you are relying more on the momentum uh, of your arms to propel you through the air and not so much on the actual uh, individual jump. This may be hard to understand or I may not be expressing myself clearly here, but you will understand this as you increase the speed of the motion. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, the next step is to get your hands involved. And uh, the best thing to do is to start out with a classical Russian variation. Uh, Russian because it's just very commonly encountered in Russian traditional dance. You may also call it Ukrainian or Polish, I really don't care. You can call it anything you would like. But the point is you want to swing your hands kind of like you're marching when you do this motion. So you have your hands and they travel laterally like so. So practice this position. You may also bring hand, the one that is at the side, you may bring it slightly to the back. This is actually what I do when I do the kachalochka. Now I will show you what it looks like on the ground. Okay, and uh, a few more points about the technical aspect of Prisyatka. When performing this motion, make sure that I demonstrated to you the hand positions. But when you're going full force, you do have to make sure that these hand positions are rigid. So they are not just here, here, hands are relaxed. No, the arm has to be fully lengthened 
and it has to be it has to be straight. It cannot be just dangling. Same goes for the Ukrainian position, which we'll uh, talk about later. The hands can't just go like this. They have to they have to be rigid, more rigid. That's the number one point. Another point to keep in mind is that many people, when they do the prisyatka, they are bent over forward with their upper body. You have to make sure that your chest is open up and your chin is slightly elevated and you are smiling and you're looking forward. This will uh, make the execution of the movement much more aesthetically uh, pleasing. And that's very important to do for other elements in traditional dances as well. So keep that in mind. Great way to synchronize the hand positions and the legs is to try to do the kachalachka while standing, while really emphasizing the hand positions, hip positions, and also uh, thinking about being on one leg and then jumping small jumping onto the other leg. Let's see what this looks like. So I'm right here, I'm right here, and I'm just practicing the end positions. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And you can also increase the speed. But the point is, you try to keep the hand positions uh, consistent. You don't want to open up your hands randomly, you don't want to close them randomly. If you're starting with a certain motion of the arms, try to continue that motion to make sure that it is consistent from each move, so that the move is consistent throughout the execution. Okay, uh, one more point on the matter of your upper body form. When you swing your hands from side to side, you don't want to elevate your shoulders. You are not a bodybuilder here, so the bodybuilding is uh, off the question. So don't elevate your traps. The traps should be lower, lower to the ground. Don't elevate your shoulders. Don't bring your shoulders forward like this. You don't, don't want to do that. Shoulders down. You can also think about scapular retraction, slight retraction, and your chest forward. Okay, so this is the position you want to have. You don't want to flex your traps, you don't want to have them up again. Shoulders down, traps down, shoulders, shoulder blades slightly back, and this is the position which you are swinging your arms from. Very important. Also important for Prisyatka, this has been mentioned in the tutorial for Prisyatka and other Prisyatka variations that I will make tutorials on in the future. The main reason why you're failing is because you're probably falling back when you attempt the move. So you may be entering like a chalachka and you can't get into this position and you fall back on your butt because you can't maintain this position right here and you find yourself that you have to be right here to do the motion. The main reason for this is because you're, you lack ankle mobility right here. You cannot get into, into this position right here. You can only remain right here because this is tight. The most, the best way to fix this is to just do squats. Uh, do pistol squats, do lunges, uh, do stretches. A good stretch for this is to just get into this position and sit like this freely by pushing down onto your knees. You can also put something underneath your heels at first to, uh, to make that a bit easier for you. Uh, or you may also hold on to something like so and over time over time, over time, you find that you will, you won't need to hold the object in place. Again, the main reason why there's nothing magical um, about this, but this is extremely important. If you don't have the mobility in your ankle, uh, and if you can't bend your knee 
like this, you may also, maybe this is a bit too tight, your quads may be a bit too tight, and that's why you can't uh, do that. But if you cannot get into a deep squat position easily, this move will be very problematic for you. And you can, uh, for reference, look at the first video that um, I will provide afterwards of my friend doing the kachalochka. But uh, he has to be uh, very tall uh, when he does this because he cannot fully get into a deep squat position. So work on your flexibility, work on your mobility. If you have those qualities, you'll be able to do the kachalochka. Number one reason, again, very important. So you may have good flexibility, good mobility, but you, if you are still doing this muscle kachalochka and you can't get the motion, my advice would be for you to try just popping. So get into this position right here, your right leg in front, your stronger leg in front, and just do a little hop. And from right leg, just hop to left leg. You can keep your knees close to each other, but just hop, 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 and then try opening up this angle. And you will soon be able to do the kachalochka more or less correctly when, when you're transferring your weight through a hop. Uh, also very important for you to understand. Uh, what else to say about this motion over here? Um, nothing. Let's go on. The ankles are too far away from each other. There is not enough hop. There is a lot of lateral motion and the kachalochka is too high as well. These are my students and the guy on the left his hand positions are not consistent. The, the kachalchka itself is good, just there is internal rotation on the right arm, which is very evident. So this is a good example of good mobility, but not enough strength. So the motion ends up not being controlled. The guy just kind of crashes down when he does the prisyatka. You want to have muscles to control the motion. And you also don't want to look straight down as he does. Subscribe to my channel if you are into exercising, if 
like strength training. Um, I will try to provide my best to provide you guys with more dance tutorials in the future. Um, as it is something that is uh, highly... Um, there's a, a niche for this uh, on this channel, so I will try to do that. But I will primarily still focus on, uh, on strength training and strength training uh, videos. So if you are into that type of stuff, uh, please consider following my videos. Also, I don't really like asking for this, but if you have found this video helpful, I would encourage you to provide a donation to me. It can be one to two dollars donation, if you like the video, of course, right? If you didn't like the video, you don't have to provide uh, anything. But the donation, if you choose, if you so choose to donate to me, you can donate by PayPal or e-transfer if you live in North America. Uh, in any case, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I thank uh, every single one of my subscribers. I hope you uh, stay safe, I hope that you are doing good in your life and I wish you all the best um, in your goals. I hope that 2020, rest of 2020 will be a productive half of a year for you and, uh, and I hope that uh, we carry on gloriously in 2021. All the best to you and take care. Bye.